class good day everyone so by this time we're going to talk about uh, chapter 22 of our reference descent with modification so that's a darwinian view of life okay pop so later on we'll talk about the two terms um descent what do we mean by descent with modification okay pop so from the word itself you can see that as along along the ancestry of life um Along its descent, so there are modification, and you call this term as evolution. Okay, po? But for formality, we use descent with modification because uh, that's gonna be uh, the basis of many scientists. Okay, po? So, yeah. So a new era of biology began in 1859. So it was Charles Darwin who published his book, The Origin of Species which focused biologists' attention on the great diversity of organisms. So, yan. So, yan po yung ano, um, start ng, ng biology just because of Charles Darwin. Okay po? So, he published the book, The Origin of Species. Okay po? So, it talks about diversity of life, diversity of organisms. Okay? So, yeah, okay. So Darwin noted that current species are descendants of ancestral species. So merong descendants, merong ancestors. Okay po? So, uh, and Darwin noted that. So evolution can be defined by Darwin's phrase, descent with modification. Yung ano kasi, uh, yung term na evolution, it's the same thing as descent with modification. Pero yung phrase ni Darwin, it's the set with modification. That's why uh, we use that term uh, because this particular topic is about Darwin's work. Okay, pa? So evolution can be viewed as both a pattern and a process. When we speak of pattern, so there is a pattern along with the evolutionary phase of an organism and there is still a process. Okay, so a long, long process, it takes a very, very long time for an evolution to occur. Okay po? So when we speak class of evolution, it does not uh, pertain to total change of the characteristics of an organism, but it only pertains to addition or deletion of a particular trait. So it does not mean na uh, total change siya ng, ano, ng traits ng organism. Okay po? It's just an addition or deletion of particular traits. Okay, so... Next, okay, so here, um, it's a timeline class showing um, the development, okay, showing the development of um, classification, okay, po? so, so, yeah, so here, so you will see um, different, ano, different scientists um, who contributed to the development of uh, ideas of Darwin, okay? Starting from Linnaeus, which uh, pertain to the classification of life, okay? So, and Newton, gradual geologic change. Also, Lamarck, this is somewhat synonymous with Linnaeus. So, spe um, according to him, so species can change, okay? So, also, uh, Malthus, okay? So, Thomas Malthus, so population limits, Cuvier, uh, fossils and extinction. So he described that. So for Lyell, so this one, Lyell, uh, uh, matatapik natin siya in our um, pre, um, succeeding lesson. So he's concerned with modern geology. Okay pa? So here is Darwin. So, so yeah, so according to that, it's around 1859. So, so yeah, so Darwin... Uh, it's around here, so evolution and natural selection. Also for Wallace, so we have here um, evolution and natural selection as well. Okay, po? so si uh, Wallace. Okay, so ano yung mga works nila class? So I want you to see this. So for Newton, proposes the theory of gradualism. When we speak class, um, class of gradualism, this pertains to um change in a physical trait of a part physical behavioral or mental trait of a particular organism in a long period of time that means evolution happens gradually 
Okay? So, when we speak of gradually, hindi biglaan. So, um, it takes long time to happen this one. But this one is contradicted to uh, the evolution when it comes to bacteria because bacteria are fastly evolving. Okay? So, they can adapt readily to a changing environment. Okay? So, but we are going to talk that um, later on. Okay? So, for Malthus, he published an essay on the principle of population. Kasi uh, si Malthus, it's concerned with the population limits. Okay po? So, for Lamarck, publishes his hypothesis of evolution. So, eto na si Lamarck, yung theory of use and disuse. Okay po? It's somewhat synonymous with uh, Darwin. However, there are uh, major, ano, major differences. Okay po? So, for Lyell, he published the principles of geology. Okay, so he Darwin naman around 1831 to 1836. So kasi um, si Darwin, bago pa man na-publish yung kanyang work, syempre nagkaroon muna siya ng uh, travel. Okay, na-publish yung book niya, it's around 1859. But before that, 1831 to 1836, siya yung nag-discover, nag-travel siya. Uh, around the world to discover the ano, uh, HMS Beagle. So, ito na yung sabik ng mga ano. Okay po. So, uh, Darwin begins his notebook. So, around 1837. Okay. So, Darwin writes essay on descent with modification. So, gumawa na siya ng essay as precursor to his published work. Okay. So, so Wallace sends his hypothesis to, Dar so Dar to Darwin and around 1859. So, yan. Um, the Origin of Species is published. Okay? So, here, um, you can see the different people contributing to the contribution of the idea on, um, what do you call this one? Evolution. Okay? Or descent with modification. Okay? So, yan. So, merong mga ground, okay? Bago pa man na publish ni Darwin yung kanyang work. Okay? So, um, you can see, kasi I cannot provide you of, uh, the picture of uh, Darwin, but you can also search sa internet kung ano yung itsura niya. Okay pa? So, scientists like Carolus Linnaeus. Okay, so, um, Carolus Linnaeus was the father of taxonomy because he is the founder of that. Okay, so taxonomy um, particularly concerns with classifying, classification, and naming of organisms. Okay, how do we classify animals? How do we classify plants? How do we classify um, dogs, cats, etc.? All the organisms uh, was founded on the classification of um, Linnaeus. All the organisms classification was founded on the uh, taxonym of Carlinaeus because he is the first one to classify organisms. Okay pa? So, paleontology on the other hand is the study of fossils. Okay? It's very, it's very important that we have paleontology here because uh, paleontology okay? Paleontology reveals the history. Okay? So, um, yung mankind natin, lately na lang siyang ano, uh, lately na lang siyang nag-appear sa sa history, okay? Yung mankind. But, since we are um, we are intellectual, meaning we have uh, we are rational, capable of reasoning. Okay po? So, the, the problem is, hindi tayo naging witness of the past. Of the past, which uh, which different organisms might um, live, pero ngayon wala na. Okay pa? So, here, paleontologists, the one who study paleontology, okay, they study fossils. Okay, so, fossils sa mga sediments, okay, so, um, below, below the ground, for, for them to rediscover kung ano ba yung nag-exist in the past. Okay, what are the organisms that exist in the past? Because these fossils are are what? Are the remains of dead organisms. Okay po? So, it was largely developed by Cuvier. Okay po? So, the study of fossils helped to lay groundwork for 
Darwin's ideas. Okay, so parang fossils served as the evidence for the work of Darwin. Kasi um, yung kay Darwin still an hypothesis if uh, there will be no evidence for that. Okay pa? So fossils are remains or traces of organisms from the past. Usually found in sedimentary rock. When we speak of sedimentary rock, these are layers of uh, these are layers of rock or or soil where um, a particular remain of an organism may be preserved or can be preserved. Okay, uh, but um, you know what, class? Paleontology is a biased. I know uh, it's a biased. I know uh, what do you call this? It's a biased science. Why? Because it only um, look into the fossils which means uh, these are only for for ver vertebrates okay so vertebrates which means they contain hard bones that can be preserved okay po so hindi niya masyadong uh, concerned class yung invertebrates where in fact um siya yung mga naunang ano uh, parang precursor ng life okay before pa man nagkaroon ng vertebrates nagkaroon na ng invertebrates so which is the precursor of life okay and um, hindi yun naka-record hindi yun naka-record sa sa strata or sa rock na sa ilalim okay hindi siya because uh, this cannot be fossilized okay yung mga invertebrates okay so that's what i mean na uh, biased okay history biased yung paleontology or study of fossils however even though it's biased still vertebrates are are good uh, foundation or, or laying um, ground for for the theory of evolution. Okay po? So, mas maganda yun. Mas maganda na yun kaysa sa wala. Okay? So, yeah. So, okay. Next. So, look at this one. This one is in particular shows the different strata. Okay? So, pag sinabing strata, it's the layer of the ground. Um, layer of the soil. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, um, if you go near into a mountain where quarrying, uh, merong quarrying, quarrying activities, you may observe that uh, there are layers of, ano, layers of rock, layers of soil, okay? So, ito, itim, ito, medyo dark, medyo light, so ganyan. So, you call that class as a strata. That's the layers of deposited sediment okay so um, please remember class how sediment was formed okay it's in the rock cycle from igneous it undergoes weathering and erosion then it settles to the particular ground then it becomes sediment as it becomes layers okay uh, one layer on top of another on top of another and on top of another okay so that means yung nasa ilalim na layer Okay, so yung nasa ilalim na layer, can I use laser pointer? Yan, okay. Um, yung nasa ilalim na layer are, or is much older than the above layer because siya yung naunang nagsettle sa ground, okay? Kasi di ba, if you're going to remember the rock cycle from igneous, igneous eh, uh, can be classified as extrusive rock which means it can be... Um, drawn out of the mantle, okay, in a form of volcano or something, then it undergoes erosion, it, it will settle in the ground, okay? So, it can be on the terrestrial or oceanic bed, okay po? So, uh, once it settles, so, nagiging layer by layer na siya, okay? So, for a long period of time, multiple layers have been created. That means, um, the lowest or the bottom layer near to the, ano, near to the mantle or something, um, layer of earth. So, that's the oldest, okay pa? If you, comp if you compare that with the above layer, okay? So, yan. So, look at this one. This one is a younger stratum because it's on top of of the older stratum okay with more recent fossil when we speak of recent uh, this particular organism uh, appears uh, lately lately after this organism okay so look at that so if you compare that if uh, paleontologists are looking for this kind of layers kasi na identify naman niya yung layer na yan okay uh, they can observe what are the organisms that appear to be in this layer, okay? So that means um, one layer corresponds to um, a particular um, time, 
okay a particular time okay so th this means that uh, kapag nag undergo sila ng carbon dating wherein they can uh, they can identify the age of a particular fossil okay so they can they can discover or they can know what particular uh, time or geologic time this particular organism exists okay so i hope you're getting what i mean with this one okay so let's talk about lamarck as i said before it's about his theory of use and disuse which made him um, famous okay so lamarck use and disuse darwin natural selection Okay, so let's go, let, we are going to compare and contrast this use and use and this use and natural selection by Darwin. Okay, so Lamarck hypothesized that, uh, let's uh, go back with this one. So, kung makikita nyo, nauna yung, ano, um, nauna yung kay Lamarck because um, nagkaroon na siya ng hypothesis, it's around 1809. Only that it's 1831 to 1836 nagkaroon na, ano, na... Uh, improvement kay Darwin. Okay? But let's talk about this one. Okay? So, saan na tayo? Okay, so Lamarck hypothesized that species okay, species evolve through use and disuse. Okay? Of body parts and inheritance acquired characteristics. So, ito po yung kanyang theory, use and disuse. That means, um, according to that theory, if you are using, or if one organism is um, using the particular body parts, um, it can be inherited or it can be inherit. Uh, ano, what do you call this one? It can be inherited, okay, by future generation. But um, if one organism or um, not using a particular body parts throughout a, par a population, um, throughout generation, uh, it will eventually disappear. Okay, so that's his theory, use and disuse. Okay, and he also proposed the acquired characteristic, meaning, um, hindi siya present, okay, hindi siya present in a population. However, due to var variation or due to need or adaptation to the environment, one, one organism can is capable of acquiring characteristic. Okay, so, yan. So, for example, okay, so, um, in a, in a, what do you call this one? In a floody area, okay, so, uh, one organism, okay, can acquire, for example, gills for, for that to live in a, in a water, okay? So, that's what I mean with acquired inheritance or acquired characteristics. So, during his travels on Beagle, Okay, so on the Beagle, Darwin collected specimens of South American plants. So remember, South American plants, um, it's, I know, um, it's around the tropics or tropical, uh, like us, tropic, I know, uh, tropic country, okay? So kasi South America siya, yung, yung mga ano kasi natin, yung mga um temperate to polar nasa ano siya nasa north america okay pa so he observed adaptation of plants and animals that inhabited many diverse environments when we speak of diverse environments it can be cold it can be dry it can be flat different diverse environments okay pa so he observed what he observed adaptation Okay? Because class, remember, that adaptation is the reason why we have evolution. Okay? So, why we have this um, um, modification in characteristics. Okay? So, yeah. Let's continue. Okay. So, that's his ano, uh, picture, Darwin. So, meron pala dito. Uh, Maliit nga lang. Okay? So, um, yan yung kanyang travel. Uh, look at that. The arrow pertains to uh, the direction of his travel. Okay? So, uh, yan. Uh, saan ba nag-start yung arrow? Okay. So, nag-start yung arrow here. So, parang inikot niya yung, ano, yung, ano, yung buong mundo. Okay? So, let's follow. Let's uh, suppose to be we start here at New Zealand part. Okay, so pumunta siya ng Australia, 
in particular sa Tarman, Termenia, then yan yung kanyang travel. Okay, so here is the equator ha. If you look at this one, uh, most of his travel nasa, what do you call this one, nasa tropic. Okay, so tropic zone. So, yan yung kanyang travel. Okay, so duman siya ng Cape of Good Hope. So, yan, sa South Africa. Okay? Then, yan yung kanyang travel sa South America. So, dyan, most of his travel, dyan niya pinag-spend. Okay? So, yan, pumunta siya ng Great Britain. Bumalik siya. Okay, so, pumaikot-ikot siya dito sa Cape of Horn and sa Sierra del Fuego. Then, inikot niya yung South America. Then, yun. Um, nakapunta siya klas sa the Galapagos Islands. So, dito niya nakita yung variation. Especially dun sa beat ng, ano, ng mga birds. Okay? So, in the Galapagos Islands, so, dito niya na-observe yung adaptation. Yung different, ano, uh, um, uh, different characteristics to different kinds of, ano, uh, environment. So, yan. So, let's proceed. So, Darwin's interest in geograph uh, geographic distribution of species was uh, pendled uh, by a stop at the Galapagos Island. So, dyan nag-end yung kanyang uh, what do you call this one? Travel. Okay? So, near the equator west of South America. So, dyan po makikita yung ano ha? Um... Uh, Galapagos Island, nasa equator part nga siya, oh, equator, okay? Near, sa west of America, near the equator, okay? So, Darwin perceived adaptation to the environment and the origin of new species as closely related. When we speak of closely rela related, para magpinsan, magkapatid, okay? So, yun yung kanila, um, that's what uh, Darwin perceived as form of adaptation, okay? So, Okay, so origin of new species as closely related processes. So recent biologists have concluded that speciation, meaning the creation of one species out of one, uh, one species, is indeed what happened to the Galapagos finches. Yung finches, ito yung ano, uh, parang big ng, ano, ng bird, okay? Yung mga birds sa Galapagos are... Uh, are subject to speciation. Okay pa? So, look at this one. This one um, is a different type of bird which is closely, which are closely related. Okay? So, if you look at this one, there are variation uh, when it comes to the finches. Okay? So, merong ano, uh, merong patulis, merong makapal, merong masyadong maliit. Okay? It it is what? It is an adaptation based on what? Based on what they are uh, consuming. So, for example, ito is a cactus eater, yung letter A. So, ganyan yung size ng kanyang finch. Okay? Yung ito naman, insect eater, since insect, mas maliit. So, maliit din yung kanyang finch. Seed eater, since seed is uh, hard enough to break, so kailangan yun ng mas malaking finch. Okay? So, this one um, is an adaptation. Okay? So, adaptation of finch based on um, kung ano yung kinakain. Okay? So, yan. Okay? So, see that? So, you can observe. Okay? In 1844, okay? So, in 1844, before it was published, so Darwin, uh, before the work of Darwin, yung The Origin of Species was published, Darwin wrote an essay on the origin of species and natural selection but did not introduce his theory publicly. So parang inalong inalang inano lang muna niya um, sinarili kasi hindi niya pa ano. So gumawa siya ng essay okay kasi um, whenever this theory na halimbawa uh, pinablish niya yung new theory during that times kasi um, subject ka pag yung mga mga theory kang ganyan means uh, you will be against with the religion. Okay po? So, kaya uh, in-anticipate niya yung uproar, kaya hindi siya nag-publish noon. Okay po? In June 1858, a year before it was um, originally published, Darwin received a manuscript from Alfred Wallace. Okay? So, Alfred Wallace, who had uh, developed a theory of natural selection similar 
to Darwin's. Okay, so parang ano, parang meron silang ano connection wherein ah uh, ito ito yung gawa niya. So bigyan ko nga siya ng ano ng manuscript something. Okay? So Darwin quickly finished the original species. Okay? In the threat na mauunahan siya ni Wallace and the next year, so he published his the origin of species. So that's what the story uh, began. Okay, so yan. So Darwin developed two main ideas. So the first one is descent with modification, which explains life unity and diversity. Unity uh, because uh, this, or, this pertains to um, the trace of an ancestor that are retained in its uh, descendants. And diversity refers to the modification, okay? Modification of characteristics from ancestor, which which can be deleted or which can be added to the descendants from from the ancestor. Okay, po. so natural selection is the cause of adaptive evolution. Okay, adaptive evolution. Okay, so it's a mere adaptation. That's why natural selection happens. Okay, so look at this one. So this one pertains to the descent with modification. Okay, so you call this particular uh, illustration as cladogram. Okay, so cladogram, so they sometimes call it as phylogeny or phylogenetic tree. Okay, so this shows a uh, relationship of organisms. Okay, Cla cladogram shows um, relationship of organisms in a form of tree. Okay po? So, look at this one. So, kung makikita mo, meron mga branches and each branch branches, you can see taxon. Okay? You, uh, this taxon are, can be a group of organisms, it can be an organism itself. Okay? So, but basta yung tawag rito is taxon. Okay? In each end of the branch, Okay, merong taxon na tinatawag. It can be group of an organism. It can be characteristic. Uh, it can be uh, organism or species. Okay po? So, this, ano, uh, the length of, I know, what they call this one. The length of the cladogram from left to right pertains to the uh, time frame. Okay, so sometimes it is scaled. Sometimes it's not. Okay po. Um, there are cladogram kasi na hindi nakascale. Pinapakita niya lang yung relationship. However, eto, this one is a scaled cladogram because it shows uh, time frame from year, ano, uh, 34 million years ago up to uh, 40, 40 million years ago. Okay. Uh, 10 raised to 4 years ago rather. So, then up to the reset, zero. Okay? So, if you look at this one, each point, okay? So, each point of cladogram, tignan natin kung merong close one. So, each point of cladogram presents or represents common ancestor. Okay? Common ancestor. For example, here, at this point, is the common ancestor of Loxodonta africana and Loxodonta cyclotis. So, yeah. So, here is the common ancestor. So, they are of the same genus. However, uh, they are different species. Okay? So, kung yung isa, Africa na, ito, cyclos, um, Cyclotis. Since they are of the same genus, so they are closely related. As compared to the uh, Elephas Maximus. Okay? So, malayo na yung, ano, yung, yung common ancestor ng Elephas Maximus from Asia. Okay? Uh, and yung dalawa, yung Loxodonta species are here. Okay? So, ito yung closely related. As compared to Mamutus, okay? Mamutus here, there, yung um, Elephas Maximus, Loxodonta species, their common ancestor with Mamutus is here. Okay? So, uh, if you go beyond, ano, beyond the past, so, you will go until here, at this point, at this point, you call this one class as the uh, common ancestor of all the taxa here. Okay, so common ancestor of all the taxa here. Okay, so in this particular, ano, in this particular graph, you will see, okay, 
you will see na ito yung mga some are recently extinct or some are ano what do you call this one still existing okay kasi nasa at year zero year ago pa lang siya that's around that uh, particular time pero yung nasa dito okay so if we are going to approximate that that's gonna be around 20 i think or 15 so these are extinct okay extinct in the past na fossils na yung nagdi-describe sa kanila fossils or paleontologists na lang yung nagdi-describe sa kanila okay pa so remember this one is cladogram cladogram shows the relationship of uh, species uh, in a form of tree or branches okay pa so let's talk here okay so let me question first which one is closely related mammothus uh, okay, so which one is closely related to mammothus? Okay, so if you're going to look at the cladogram, it's closely related to what? It's closely related to Elephas maximus. Okay, po, Elephas maximus. So it's closely related to Elephas maximus. If I ask you uh, which um, species is Closely related to Loxodonta cyclot um, cyclotis, uh, you will look at the, just here. So, it's the Loxodonta africana. Okay po? So, cladogram shows the closely relationship or the relationship. How close uh, the relationship of one species to another. Okay po? So, next. Okay, so Darwin noted that humans have modified other species by selecting and breeding individuals with this desired traits. Okay, a process called artificial selection. Okay, so ito na yung ano, uh, meron ng mediation yung human. Okay, human mediated um, selection. Okay, hindi siya natural selection because when we speak of natural, uh, there is no uh, presence of or there is no intervention with a uh, man, okay, with human. Pero pag natural, without human, it happens. Okay pa? So, you call this one as artificial selection, contrary to the natural one. Okay, Darwin then described four observations of nature, and from this, drew two inferences. Okay, from four observations to two inferences. Okay, so number one observation plus... So, members of a population, okay, often vary greatly in traits. Okay, so though they are of the same uh, population, they vary in traits. So, yan. So, look at this one. Ano yung kanilang varying traits? They are of the same population then, the same species, but they are vary greatly in their traits. So, just look at their, ano, okay? So, just look at their shells you will see different colors, bands of color. This one is a vertical one. This one is horizontal, circular. This one is spiral. So, iba-iba. Okay? So, especially, also another with a length. Okay? So, you will see, class, that it's, ano, um, it's diverse. Okay? Pa. Observation 2. Traits are inherited from parents to offspring. Okay? So, yeah. So, traits are inherited from an offspring. Whatever, for example, uh, be the son or be the offspring of this one, so it will look more likely to be his parent than with his, ano, uh, with his, what do you call this one, other members. Okay, po, observation three, all species are capable of producing more offspring that the environment can support okay all species are capable of producing more offspring than an air environment can support so ito na yung tinatawag natin plus na population limit okay so meron na tayong tumatawag at tinatawag itong ano logistics okay so exponential growth okay ito na yung tinatawag natin log logistic growth and exponential growth okay po so sa ecology yan okay so, observation four, overproduction leads to competition for food and other um, resources. 
Okay? So that means when one population are overpopulated, okay, they, this leads to competition. Okay? You call this specifically as intraspecific competition for food and other resources. Why intra? Because they compete with the same kind of species. Okay? So these are four observations of Darwin. So the individual, uh, the individuals best adapted to, to their environment will more likely to survive and reproduce. Okay? Siyempre, kung sino yung adapted, the more adaptive you are, the more uh, chances of survival. Okay? So, ito yung first inference ni Darwin. Okay, so individuals whose inherited traits give them a higher probability of survival. And reproducing in a given environment tend to leave more offspring than the other. Okay? Okay, so yun. Okay, pag maganda yung trait mo, so more chances of survival, uh, more chances of generating more and more populations after you. Okay po, next in inference number two, this an equal ability of individuals to survive and reproduce kasi yung iba maganda yung pag survive and pag reproduce yung iba naman na na ano siya na on top siya ng ano the other okay will lead to accumulation of favorable traits okay in the population of organisms okay so nakikita nyo uh, since napagaanuhan siya uh, nasasapawan siya ng ibang organisms the tendency, nasa baba siya, is to adjust to the environment. mag a adapt siya, okay? To a more favorable. Ano yung i-adapt niya? Acquired characteristic, it's a favorable trait. That help them, or that helps them to what? To survive its generation. Okay? So, yeah. These are two inferences uh, made out of Darwin. Okay? So, Darwin was influenced by Thomas Malthus, who noted the potential for human population to increase faster than food supplies and other resources. Okay? So, yeah, it was influenced by Thomas Malthus. Ano nga yung gawa ni Malthus? Balikan natin. Okay, so Malthus, uh, essay on the principle of population. So, ito na yung sabi kong uh, it can create, uh, a population can create numbers of population uh, more than uh, an environment can support. Okay? So, yeah. So, if some heritable traits are advantageous, this will accumulate in the population and this will increase in the frequency of individuals with those adaptations. So, ito na yung sinasabi. Um, uh, favorable traits will be more likely to retain or to be inherited by the next generation as to the unfavorable ones. Okay pa? Compared to the unfavorable ones. Okay? So, this process explains the match between organisms and their environment. So, if you are not suited to the environment, you will become what? It's either you don't survive, you become extinct, or you evolve. You acquired favorable traits that will um, suit you to the environment. So, that's just two things. Okay? So, meron tayong mga terms dito. Okay? Survival of the fittest. Ito kasi yung term na ginagamit. Okay? So, individuals with certain heritable adaptive characteristics survive and reproduce at a higher rate than other individuals. Okay? So, pag, uh, let's not be confused of the word fittest. Pag sinabi kasi natin class na fittest, um, nagpipertain siya sa degree. Okay? Degree ng organism. For example, sino yung king, king of the jungle? For example, lion. Um, siya yung more likely na mag-reproduce. Uh, mag -re okay? But that's not, ano, um, uh, fittest does not mean you are large enough. Okay? Fittest does not mean you are strong enough, you are fast enough to survive the environment. You know what? There are organisms that are uh, also fit, though they are not the fittest. For example, they are capable of having camouflage, which make them um, hide themselves away from predators. Okay? 
they are capable of uh, for example reproducing in a in a harsh environment where uh, fetus organisms like lion ca cannot okay so depende yon kaya let's return this survival of the fittest as survival of the fit enough okay fit enough you are fit enough to survive okay you don't have to be fittest to survive so you are, you're just going to have uh, to be fit enough to survive okay but so individuals with certain heritable adaptive characteristics survive and reproduce at higher rate than other individuals so next, natural selection increases the adaptation of organisms to the environment over time. Over time, okay? Since you are naturally selected, your trait is naturally selected, you will have to adapt, okay? So you have more chance of survival, okay? So speciation, if an environment changes over time, natural selection may result in adaptation to this new condition and may give rise to new species. Okay? So since uh, nagkaroon ka ng ano, adaptation, you are naturally selected, you, will, you are more likely to be speciated, meaning uh, creation of one species out of another. Okay? So what will happen to the another uh, other species that one species come out of so it can be or it can also uh yun nga yung sinasabi ko lead to other species or it can become instinct so so that means ancestors yung sa kaladogram natin ancestors dalawa lang yung pwede mangyari it's either na maging extinct or uh magkaroon ng modification para mag-survive siya Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so, next. So, John Endler has studied, studied the effects of predators on wild guppy population. So, brightly colored males, ito, ito yung ano, yung sa gap, uh, ano, uh, brightly colored males are more attractive to females. So, that's one trait. Uh, advantageous trait yung color ko uh, coloration ng body okay so however brightly colored males are more vulnerable to predation oh uh, ito uh, this one is contradicting uh, one trait is contradicting to the other one is survival the other is reproduction okay so However, brightly colored males are more vulnerable to predation. So, yun. Even though yung advantages niya is for attraction, female attraction, but yung disadvantage niya is for predation. So, yan. So, gabi population in pools with fewer predators had more brightly colored males. So, depende siya sa environment. More predators, that means it will adapt to um, not brightly colored. Pero kapag less predator syempre it will ano uh, uh, it will uh, allocate uh, more to a colored okay brightly colored males for for attraction female attraction since konti lang naman yung ano predators okay so here is the experiment so predator is the kill uh, killifish okay so preys mainly on juvenile guppies which do not express the color genes. Okay, so here is this. Um, uh, there is a two environment. So, ito yung one environment, the other environment. Okay? So, guppies, adult males may have bright colors than those in pipe um, cichlid pools. Okay? So, ito yung sa ano, uh, predator Pike cichlid preys mainly on adult guppies. Ito yung pike uh, cichlid. Ito kasi yung guppies. Oh, guppies, okay? Ito yung guppies. Adult males are more drab in color than those in killifish. Okay? So, so yan. Yeah, if you're going to understand this experiment, you will notice that uh, an area of colored spots, mas mababa yung ano, uh, uh, in this. Dalawa kasi, um, source of population, transplanted population okay so um, you will see the i know um, 
uh, the difference. Okay, pa? So, uh, I'm not going to explain this further, but let's continue. Okay, so Endler transferred highly colored groupies with few predators. Okay, to a pool with many predators. From few predators to pool uh, with many predators. As predicted, over time, the colored became less brightly colored. Okay, kasi syempre, they are tend to be caught, uh, to be caught by uh, predators. So Endler also transferred drab colored groupies with many predators to a pole with few predators. Pag sinabing drab colors, hindi siya brightly colored. As predicted over time, the population become more brightly colored. So, yan. Okay? So, from here, nag-increase. Okay? So, after the transplantation. Okay? So, yan. So, the use of drugs to combat HIV, human immuno deficiency virus okay so selects for viruses resistant to these drugs okay so yeah so hiv uses the enzyme reverse transcriptase kasi ito yung ano uh, from from rna to dna instead of dna to rna it uh is the reverse transcriptase okay instead na mag-transcript yung rna from the dna to create a protein <laughs> So, ito baliktad from RNA to DNA. So, it, so therefore, HIV is, ano, it's a um, retrograde. When we speak of retrograde, baliktad. So, kaya nahihirapan yung ating mga scientists to combat these drugs or to combat this virus. Okay? So, HIV uses the enzyme reverse transcriptase to make a DNA version of its own RNA genome. So, balik ta, di ba? Normally kasi sa gene expression which we discussed last time is from DNA, yung RNA nagtatranscribe lang siya from the DNA to create uh, uh, proteins. Pero ito, balik ta, it's a retrograde. Okay? So, yan. So, the drug 3TC is designed to interfere and cause errors in the manufacture of DNA from the virus. Okay? So, ito yung drug na uh, nagko-combat sa um, HIV. So, designed to interfere and cause errors in the manufacture of DNA. Meaning, yung reverse transcriptase, naglalagay siya ng error para hindi siya makapag-create ng DNA. Okay? So, some individual uh, HIV viruses have a variation. Okay, variation that allows them to produce DNA without errors. What do you call this variation? You call this variation as adaptation. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, nag adapt na sila doon sa drug natin. So, these viruses have greater reproductive success. Kaya, uh, as of now, yung HIV natin, it's hard to combat. Okay? So, the population of HIV virus viruses has therefore developed resist uh, de developed resistance to 3TC drug. Yun yung problem natin. Naging, ano, naging, what do you call this one? Naging resistant. Okay? Naging resistant yung HIV to 3TC which is supposed to, uh, which is supposed to combat HIV. Kaya ngayon, as of now, okay, wala pa din gamot and it's hard to combat. Okay? So, Okay, so, yan. Next. So, the ability of bacteria and virus, uh, viruses to evolve rapidly poses a challenge to our society. Okay? Ang pinaka-problem talaga natin, class, yan, gaya ng coronavirus, okay? Yung adapt, uh, rapidly adapting viruses, okay? They become more and more adapted to the environment fastly. Sabi ko nga, they are the most fastest to evolve. In all, in all organisms, they are the fastest to evolve, and they, you know, since they they are evolving rapidly, they are capable of resisting our drugs. Hindi pa nga nagagawa ng ano? Hindi pa nga nagagawa yung bakuna. Meron na namang panibagong strain ng virus. Okay, so yun yung problem natin sa society natin. So natural selection does not create new traits. So, but it edits or selects for traits already present in the population. Ito yung sinasabi ko, hindi talaga niya binabago yung organism, yung trait ng organism. 
nag-ano lang siya, nag-edit. Okay? Kinukuha niya lang yung ano, kinukuha niya lang yung favorable and tinatanggal niya lang yung hindi favorable. Okay? So the local environment determines which traits will be selected or for or selected against in any, and in any specific uh, population. So I hope you're getting this one. Please. Okay? So it's a good ano, uh, discussion for you. Okay? So fossil evidence over time. So look at this one. Okay? So um, one, two, three, four. Okay? Look at the different fossils discovered. This was discovered at a different depth. Tignan nyo yung arrow. This pertains to the strata. Okay? Depth in meters. So, supposed to be at 18 meters below the ground, you find this fossil. Okay? And you call this fossil as Bristolia mohavensis. Mohavensis. Okay? So, so they are of the same genus. All of these fossils are of the same genus, Bristolia, but they are of different species. So, after several years, I think, at layer... Ano, between 12 and 14, that's gonna be 13. So, uh, 13 meters below the ground, okay, you, they found Bristolia haringoni. Okay, so, at 8 meters below ground, Bristolensis naman. At 6 meters below ground, um, insolence naman. Okay, therefore, uh, there is a change over time, okay? From Mohavensis, it changes um, series okay, of adaptation to insolence. Insolence. Okay po? So, look at this one. So, makikita mo, uh, may pagkakapare-parehas sa kanilang itsura. However, merong modification. Okay? So, look at the um, antenna. Ant I don't know if that's antenna. Or antenna. Okay? So, yan. So, that's, that was in California then. Okay? So, yan. Paleontologists study fossils of possible transitional forms. Okay? So, tingnan nyo. Sabi ko nga, ang paleontologist, ano lang siya, um, biased siya pagdating sa organisms kasi ang fossils natin, yung mga mollusks, yung mga mayroong mga exoskeleton, mga vertebrates na napipreserve yung kanilang katawan. Okay? So, wait lang po. Okay, so next. Okay, so balikan natin. Okay, so paleontologists which study fossils of possible transitional form. Transition meanings from one species to another species. Okay pa? So here, um, ito yung mga rediscover. Tignan nyo, meron mga missing parts. Okay? Um, this, this one is a whale ancestor. Okay? Whale ancestor. Tingnan nyo from, from terrestrial it becomes what? It becomes aquatic or fully aquatic. Okay? Terrestrial fully aquatic. Meaning yung ancestor class ng whale is a terrestrial ancestor. Okay po? So here, we started from Pachycetus. Okay? Pachycetus is a terrestrial ancestor of whale. Kung makikita nyo, yung mga merong color, yan lang yung mga na-discover. Yan lang yung mga discovered bones or parts or fossils out of this pachycetus. Okay? Yung iba, parang reconstruct na lang nila and in na lang nila na ganito yung missing parts. Okay pa? So, after that, B, we have um, Rod, Rodo, what do you call this one? Rhodocetus, okay? It's a predominant, predominantly aquatic. So, kung makikita nyo, meron siyang limbs. However, these limbs is for um, swimming. Okay? So, pre-aquatic siya. Okay? Next, we have Doro, what do you call this? Dorodon, fully aquatic na siya. Okay? Pero kung makikita mo, um, yung fin, uh, meron siyang pelvis. Uh, which is an evidence of being a terrestrial one, okay? Pelvis and hind limb, okay? Meron siyang limb, okay? So, next we have Bala, Balaena. So, recent whale ancestor. So, meron siyang pelvis and hind limb. So, kung makikita nyo, 
uh, you call this class as comparative anatomy. Comparative anatomy where it um, compares the anatomical structure of ano, uh, anatomical structure of um, species or organisms. Okay? So, yun yung ano ginamit natin for more than uh, hundreds of years Igo ginagamit natin yung comparative ano um, comparative anatomy um, in finding for closely related um uh, relationship of organisms. Okay? Pero ngayon since very ano na tayo, very what do you call this one? very technology oriented. So hindi na tayo gumagamit ng comparative anatomy. Though it is still a ground, pero ang pinaka final judgment talaga is the DNA. Okay? Uh DNA comparison, okay? So, yeah, it looks for a DNA, okay? So, homology, remember class, is similarity resulting from common ancestry, okay? Similarity resulting from common ancestry, okay? So, when we speak of homologous structure, uh, pag sinabing structure na class, we are now pertaining to anatomical, okay? Anatomy of an organism, Okay? Anatomical resemblances that represent variations on a structural frame present in a common ancestor. Look at this one. Okay, so these are homologous structure. Homology meaning they are um, they they are retained. Okay, resulting from a common ancestry. Similarity. Meron silang similarities. Tignan nyo. Okay, they are labeled for different colors for human, cat, whale, and bat. Therefore, this four has relationship. Okay, they are closely related because of their anatomical structure. Humerus, tingnan niyo yung humerus ng apat. Okay, so they are sa This is for human pala. Okay, iba naman kasi yung tawag for other ano. Pero meron silang pagkakaparehas for ulna, tingnan niyo yung mga parts ng ano ng ibang organisms. Carpals, yang kulay yellow. Okay? Metacarpals, yan yung nasa kamay nyo. Hmm. Yan. So, you call this as homologous structures. Okay? So, human, cat, whale, and bat are homologous in structure. Okay? So, yan. So, comparative embryology naman. Kung kanina, uh, comparative anatomy. Ito naman, comparative embryology. It reveals anatomical homologies not visible in adult organisms. So, kasi nga embryology, tumitingin sila sa embryo. Okay, itsura ng embryo. Tingnan nyo, this one is a chick embryo and a human embryo. So, yung kanilang pagkakaparehas, okay, meron silang post-anal tail. Okay, post-anal tail. And meron silang pharyngeal pouches. Pharyngeal pouches dito sa pharynx nyo. Okay? So, yan. It reveals anatomical homologies not visible in adult organisms. Next! There is this term class vestigial structure as vestigial structures. So these are remnants of features that serve important function uh, function in the organism's ancestor. Like us, yung ancestor natin, uh, meron tayong vestigial structure na before, ito na nga yung sabi kong theory of use and disuse. Before, meron siyang important function, pero ngayon, uh, vestigial na lang siya. Hindi na siya uh, much that important to our body. For example, one example of our vis vestigial uh, structure, yung nasa coccyx nyo, yung nasa post tail nyo, okay? Kung kakapain nyo siya sa may pet nyo, uh, ma makakapain nyo yung vestigial structure nyo dyan. You call that as coccyx, okay? Or the post anal tail, okay? So, also your appendicitis though it's um, though it ano it is still functioning as of today meron siyang function pero not not that much important kasi tinatanggal lang nga siya pwede siyang tanggalin though meron pa rin siyang function pero before uh, meron siyang important function in an organism in our ancestor okay so examples of homologies at molecular level are genes so ito na yung tinatawag nating ano uh, Molecular comparison, uh, molecular level compara comparison. Okay, so yung kanina anatomical ano comparative anatomy. Ato naman comparative embryology. 
Ito naman, yung pangalawa, ay pangatlo, we have uh, molecular comparison. Okay? So, it looks at our gene, uh, genes, okay? Uh, kung talag, talaga bang tayo ay, ano, uh, tayo ay closely related, okay, with other organisms. How close are we to other organisms? So, you call, uh, we are using DNA. For most of the cases, um, since ngayon, technology-oriented na tayo, so ito na yung ginagamit natin kasi ito yung mas accurate. Okay? So, it can change uh, comparative embryology and uh, comparative anatomy uh, because of the molecular comparison. Okay? So, Okay, homologies and tree thinking. So the Darwinian concept of evolutionary tree can, of life can explain homologies. So evolutionary trees are hypotheses. These are just hypotheses because it can it is still ano, subject for change, subject for uh, what do you call this one? Subject for improvement or reclassification. So evolutionary trees trees are hypotheses about the relationships among different groups. It can be made using different types of data. For example, anatomy, it can be used for anatomy or DNA sequence data. Okay? So, yun po. Yan po yung graph. So, look at this one. So, these are homologies and evolutionary tree. So, among all these organisms, lung fishes, amphibians, mammoths, lizards, and snakes, crocodiles, ostrich, hawks, and other birds. So, kung makikita nyo class, Ang common ancestor niya, ito yung pinaka-first branch point. All these organisms, yung common ancestor niya, ito. Yung number one. Okay? So, um, nagba-branch out siya class kapag merong um, acquisition or change in trait. For example, ito. Itong two common ancestor ng uh, lahat ng to, the rest, except except lang, lang fishes, is that merong presence of tetrapod limbs. Meaning, apat na, apat na limbs. Okay? So, tetrapod. Nagkaroon sila ng tetrapod limbs, except for lang fishes. So, ito yung kanilang common ancestor. Okay? So, yung number two is all, common ancestor of all the organisms present in a taxa, except for lang fishes. Okay? Next, ito naman for number three, the common ancestor of number three, which is for mammals, lizards, and snakes, crocodiles, ostrich, and hawks, and other birds. Presence of amnion. Okay? Yung amnion class is the uh, presence of amnion sac. Okay? Yung nasa, ano, nasa, during pregnancy, uh, you call that as amnion. Okay? Okay? So, amnion. Wala niyan yung amphibians, kasi yung amphibians, egg lay, um, what do you call this? Though egg laying, laying siya, pero, same with lizards, pero wala siyang amnion. Okay? Uh, homologous characteristic. Next, for number four, okay? So, lizards and snakes, crocod crocs, ostrich, and hawks and other birds. So, hindi dito pinakita yung ano, uh, hindi dito pinakita yung character, pero um, yung outgroup niya class, you call this as outgroup is lizards and snake. Okay? So, if you're going to compare that, okay, so yung lizard is, is snake is uh, para sa sila, reptile. Okay? So, yun. Basta merong uh, ano, um, yung snake, wala na siyang limbs. Okay? In this case. Okay pa? So, next or vestigial na lang yung limbs ng ano, lizard or ng snakes. Okay? So, next for crocs, okay, so ito yung odd group niya is the crocs, appearance of feathers for ostrich and ox and other birds. So, yan, so here it says here that from amphibians to ox and other birds, merong presence ng tetrapods, from mammals, except for amphibians, to hawks and other birds, presence of amnion, okay, for ostrich and hawks and other birds, Okay, so they are birds. Okay po? So, ito po. Yung lahat ng to, common ancestor nila is yung number one. Okay? So, yan. So, this, meron tayong dalawang term dito. You call this as convergent evolution. is the evolution from similar, okay, similar or analogous feature in this distantly related groups. Okay? So, 
Yan. So, dito, in this case, ano yung similar sa kanila? Okay? So, for number 2, lahat ng similar sa kanila is the presence of limbs. Tetrapod limbs. Okay? So, yan. So, evolution of similar or analogous uh, features in distantly related groups. Pag sinabing analogous class, remember, when we are talking about anatomy, analogous pertains to same function but different structure. Okay? Same yung function niya but different uh, what do you call this one? Uh, different structure. Okay? For example, um, yung whale flippers okay? Whale fli uh, um, yung uh, whale flippers uh, wait lang. Yung bat, bat wings and the wings of a butterfly, okay? They are analogous in such way that they are the same function for flying, but if you look at the anatomical structure, they are of different, okay? Different um, anatomical structure. You call that class as analogous. Nagkakaroon ng convergent evolution when there is a um, similar environment. Okay, similar environment. Okay, or same type of environment. For example, um, yung whale, tsaka other fish, for example. Um, nagkakaroon sila ng convergent evolution kasi yung environment nila is for marine. Okay, sa, sa tubig talaga sa dagat. So, it's more likely, uh, magkakaroon sila ng um, analogous, analogous, same function for swimming, but since they are they come from different ancestor so they are of different structure okay so analogous traits arise when groups independently adapt to similar environment ano yung sinasabi ko similar environment in similar ways okay so since they need for flying yung bat saka yung butterfly okay so they will have to have uh, flying as their function okay pa so, that's the convergent evolution. Okay? So, here in this case, yung flying squirrel, tsaka yung sugar glider sa Australia. Okay? So, yan. Okay? Ano yung same function sa kanila? Yung flying. Okay? Sugar glider, ito flying squirrel. So, same yung function, uh, pero different, uh, in, um, different structure or common ancestor. Okay? So, they adapt independently in similar environment. Okay? So, biogeography, Darwin's observation of biogeography, the, ge the, the geographic distribution of species formed an important part of his theory of evolution. Biogeography, meaning uh, combination of biological features with geographical features. Okay? Or geographic distribution of species. So, islands may have many endemic species found only in part of the world or nowhere else. Halimbawa, sa Pilipinas, endemic lang yung tarsier or endemic lang yung Philippine eagle. So, dito lang siya talaga sa Pilipinas makikita. In other parts, hindi mo siya makikita. You call this class as endemic or endemic. So, Darwin postulated that endemic species are often closely related to species on the nearest mainland or island. Closely related to the nearest mainland or island. Okay, alibawa, yung nasa Karamoan Island, for example, a gecko, uh, one species of gecko, is closely related to the other species of ge gecko that can be found in the mainland Karamoan. So, that's one, uh, that's one example of uh, postulate of the reef. Okay? So, Earth's continents were formerly united in a single large continent called Pangea. So, ito, wag po kalimutan. Uh, before kasi, meron itong theory, si Alfred Wegener. So, I want you to look after the work of Alfred Wegener. He explained that uh, before uh, the continent or yung Earth, meron lang isang single large continent. You call this as Pangea. But, uh, Throughout the time, nagkaroon ng, ano, nagkaroon ng major changes sa landscape ng Earth. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng separation uh, by means of continental drift theory. Okay? Continental drift theory. So, uh, mag-research kayo about sa work ni Alfred, uh, 
regimen. Okay? So, an understanding of continent movement and modern distribution of species allows us to predict when and where different groups evolve. Okay? So, alimbawa, um, uh, nag-separate yung Africa uh, and South America, for example. So, yun. So, you can see species in the fossils na meron silang similarities. Okay pa? So, saan ba nang galing yung species na to? Okay, saan ba to nag-evolve? Saan ba so, saan ba to nag-distribute probably? Okay, so um, that's the study under biogeography. Okay? So, ito yung kay Darwin natural selection observation. Okay, so individuals in a population vary in the heritable characteristics. Okay? So organisms produce more offspring than the environment can support. Ito yung inference niya, yung dalawa. So, individuals that are well suited to the environment tend to live more offspring than the other individuals. And, over time, favorable traits accumulate in a population. Okay? So, yeah. So, let's skip here. So, this one just shows the uh, resistance of mosquitoes to um, drug. Okay pa? So, um, natural selection favors this resistance. Number of resistant individuals increases over time. Ito yung nakakabahala sa, sa society natin. Okay? For example, man zero, 4% resistance yung mosquito or 4% uh, of the mosquito, sample mosquito is resistant to DDT. This is the drug uh, for mosquito. After 8 months, naging 45% na yung resistant. After 12 months, naging 77% na yung resistant. Okay? So, mosquitoes were considered resistant if they were not killed within 1 hour of receiving a dose of 4% DDT. Okay? So, yun po yung problem. Okay? So, this is just one example from, from this book. Okay? So, yan. Okay, so that's gonna end our presentation. So, I want you to um, review my discussion. So, thank you for uh, listening and watching this video. Okay, pa?